Hello, I'm Dr. Jeanette Neshwat and I'm here at your local Harps grocery store. Now we all want to live a healthy lifestyle, but when it comes to grocery shopping, where do we get started? Well, I'm here with Diane Johnson and she's going to tell us how to get started. That's right. The best way to start is with a list. Because if you don't have a list, you're going to buy too many impulse things and they're usually not the most nutritious nor the most economical choices. Mm -hmm. So you should sit down and think about your week to come. What activities does your family have? and how much you're going to be home, what lunches do you need to prepare for school or work, and start your list. And I would start it with breakfast because that's easy. We usually have the same things for breakfast over and over again. So look at what you have and decide what milk, cereal, or whatever you need for breakfast. Then think about the lunches that you need to prepare for the week and put those lunch foods down. And then you're warmed up so you can tackle dinner, which is the hardest part. Mm -hmm. Well, I usually like to have a little bit of fruit or maybe a bowl of cereal for breakfast, so should we hit the vegetable and produce section and start off there? Sounds like a good idea. All right, let's go. Bananas are a good choice because they're kind of nature's convenience foods. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is unzip them and eat them, and sometimes with kids going to school, you can grab one and hand it to them on the way out the door, and they have lots of potassium, so they're very good for you. All right, and I'll cross that off for a list. I actually threw in some cherries as well. Why are these so good for us? Cherries are a good choice because they're um, anti-inflammatory, so they're good for all of us, and they're a different color, and you know all the colors represent different antioxidants, so you want your cart to be colorful, and yours is. Okay, golden grams, this is a favorite. Well, the good thing about golden grams is that they have a lot of whole grain, and that's one of the first things that you want to look for is the cereal with whole grain. So you can come to the, the side, and what you want to see is that the first ingredient is whole, whole something. So the first ingredient in golden grams is whole grain wheat. Then another thing to look for would be the amount of sugar. And golden grams do have 10 grams of sugar, which is kind of on the cusp. It's not a terrible amount, but it's a, a little high for some people. So if you want less sugar, you might choose something like the good old Cheerios. Yellow Box Cheerios. Especially if you're a diabetic and need something less sugar or sugar-free. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. And so you can look again, and the first ingredient is whole grain oats, so that's good. And then you go up and look at the sugar. And the Yellow Box Cheerios only have a gram, gram of sugar wow. instead of 10. It tastes just as good. Yes. All so right. the first thing you can do is start with the front and look for things that say whole grain, but then go to your nutrition facts label and kind of look at the details that are important to you. Good old skim milk. Skim milk's okay for adults, people that have already gone through childhood and puberty, but for children, they need what type of milk, Diane? Children under the age of two need whole milk. Mm -hmm. After they're over two or maybe three, then it's okay to start scaling down to lower fat milk. Probably 1% milk is the best family milk because it has a teeny little bit of, of butter fat, which mm -hmm. is good, but not as much butter fat as the whole milk. So we get enough of our, our, our protein, sugars, and a little bit of sodium as well as a little bit of carbohydrates to get you going in the morning, especially for those young kids going off to school, right? Yes, yes. Milk is a big source of protein in the morning, and protein stays with you, so there should be some protein at breakfast. All right. Okay, so Diane, we've got our breakfast items all in place. Now it's time for lunch. We need something kind of quick, if we're in a hurry. What do you recommend for lunch? I see you've got some uh, hot dogs here. Right, I think if you're choosing processed meats, which we often do for lunch because they have um, good staying power in the uh, lunch box, the most important thing is to choose the low fat ones. So we have some 98% fat free wieners that are made with turkey, which would be a good choice, along with some of the lower fat deli meats like the turkey breast, even the roast beef. Most of the deli meats are lower in fat and they're making some lower sodium ones now. And on top of that, it's affordable in the quick preparation time, is that right? Right, there's no preparation to it, so that's another reason that we usually like to have that for lunch, other than the fact that the sodium and the preservatives in the processed meats do make it um, less likely to spoil in the lunchbox. Now, Diane, there's always been a lifelong battle, white versus wheat. What's your take? 
Well, since half of our grains every day need to be whole grain, you start with breakfast and we picked out some whole grain cereals, then you probably need to do some whole grain bread before the day is over. Lots of times when we're out, we don't have a choice and we have to take white. But at home, you could choose a nice, soft, whole grain bread and they're not as harsh as they used to be. They have dough conditioners and this is almost like white bread once you feel of it, taste it, toast it. But if you look on the, on the back at the label, you can see the first ingredient is stone ground whole wheat flour. And that's important because that gives you the germ and all the trace element as well as the, the fiber. Plus we want to try to avoid white bread because the heavy starch, the carbohydrates, if it's not burned off, ends up turning into fat and that's why most of Americans are overweight. Is that, is that true? Well, probably the worst carbohydrates for Americans are the sugars. sugars yeah. And um, white bread in moderation would be okay. We have gone from eating five pounds of sugar per person per year in the early 1900s to 159 pounds of sugar per person and so that's our biggest problem as far as the calories are, are concerned. As far as calories are concerned, two pieces of whole grain bread are going to have the same calories and the same carbohydrate as two pieces of white bread. So Diane, whether we're having a little salad for lunch or maybe as a side item with lunch or dinner, what kind of salads and, and green leaves do you recommend? The darker, the lighter? Tell us about that. The darker colors are going to have more nutrients, so a good choice would be the baby spinach all by itself, or you could go with one of these mixes, which are my favorite, that have a lot of different colors. It has the spinach as well as some of the red leaf lettuce that's going to have a different set of antioxidants. Another thing not to forget is the, the cabbage. Cabbage is in the same family with, with broccoli has a lot of anti-cancer nutrients and that's a good quick choice for dinner. All you have to do is get a bag of the coleslaw and then pick up some light dressing to go on it and you have coleslaw. Whereas our mothers used to have to shred the cabbage. We don't have to do that anymore. Or you can kind of mix and match. There's some of that in there. Yes, you can. Okay, a, a good thing to look for when you're shopping for dressings would be not the fat-free dressings but light dressings. That's a good family dressing. It's going to have a good flavor. We'll have that little bit of fat that you need to make a meal more satisfying and not have as many calories as the full fat dressing. So you don't have to go exactly for the fat-free. You can have a little flavor. The, the dressing doesn't have to be completely zero fat, almost no calories, because then that kind of takes away from the flavor. Right. And then you won't want to have it again in the future. Every meal should have a little bit of fat so you can absorb the fat-soluble vitamins in the salad. Mm -hmm. If the salad doesn't have any fat on it, then you don't absorb A, D, E, or K. Absolutely. And, and another alternative is to have the extra virgin olive oils, um, oil and vinegars that are a little more lighter, clear dressings versus the, uh, the white ones, the creamy ones, which can still be a little bit more saturated. Yes, that's a, always a good thing to do, be to look at the labels and see how much saturated fat or sodium, if you're watching sodium, some of the dressings can be really high in sodium. So you want to read the labels for the amount of saturated fat and the amount of sodium in order to pick a heart healthy mm -hmm. dressing. Okay. So this actually ranch dressing has less sodium than the olive oil. So dressing. sometimes so, it's not what you yeah, think. That's exactly. why that Got to read the labels, that's right. Wow, well, Diane, there are so many different types of apples. Apples are one of my favorite fruits, great source of fiber. Why else are they so important to have in our diets? We now know that apples have a lot of antioxidants, so it's really true. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. They're very nutritious. <laughs> helps uh, keep our blood vessels nice and, and flowing and clear, helps reduce cholesterol, and um, helps with aging as well. That's right, the antioxidants protect us from aging. All right, what's your favorite apple? Green? My or favorite apple is the Fuji. The because it's crisp and juicy and sweet. I absolutely love slicing up some green peppers with a little bit of grilled chicken and onions. It's just delicious. And look, they're locally grown here. Nice and fresh as well. That's perfect. That means they're going to have more vitamin mm -hmm. C and other nutrients mm -hmm. than 
something that has been trucked across the country. The research also shows that they will have fewer pesticides than something that's grown on a big car corporate farm. So you always want to shop local first. And if there is more color mm -hmm. to the peppers, then that increases the antioxidants also. Oh, all right, here we go. This is my favorite type of chicken, boneless, skinless chicken breast. Yes, this is what we women um, really prefer now because we don't have to take the time to skin it. And the skin has a lot of fat, so it's, it's good to, to either cook it with the skin and take it off or just go ahead and buy the skinless chicken. And the, the breasts are lower in fat than the dark meat, but the dark meat is healthy for you too, as long as it's skinless. And quick to cook, you can either put it um, in, a, in the oven and bake it or lightly grill it, is that right? That's right, and it cooks very quickly. And there are even chicken tenders. They're cut into smaller pieces if you're in a really big hurry. And, and little side items go along with it, maybe like a little green salad or some vegetables as well. That's right. Yeah, and, and then you've got a quick meal probably within 15 or 20 minutes. Yep, already made in a bag salad that we saw over in the produce section earlier. Diane, if someone doesn't feel like having chicken one day and they want maybe a little bit of beef, what do you recommend? Well, red meat can be a healthy part of your diet if you eat it in moderation and if you choose a really lean cut. The leanest cut of beef is the eye of round roast. And I love it because it's so convenient. As you can see, there's no fat to trim off of it, kind of like your skinless chicken breast. And so you could take this out of the package and dump it in the crock pot along with some vegetables, or you can put it on the grill, or you can freeze it and slice it really thin for stir fry. And it does have very much more fat than the skinless chicken breast. Very good. How often? Once a week? two or three times a month for red meat? The newest recommendation is that it should be four to one chicken and fish to red meat. Okay. So you'd have four servings of chicken or fish to one serving of red meat. All right. Well, it's time for dessert. We want something that tastes delicious, that's a little sweet and on the healthy side. What have we here? A good way to go would be a light ice cream or a sherbet. Mm -hmm. So to lower the fat, Instead of premium ice cream, choose one that says mm -hmm. light, and it usually cuts the fat and, and calories in about half. Or you could go with sherbet. Now the sugar is higher in sherbet, but the fat is, is almost negligible usually in, in sherbet. So these would be good light choices. And the most important thing for Americans is to realize that the serving size is a half a cup. Not a bowl. Not, not a big bowl or the whole container. Well, it looks like we're all done with our shopping for today. Diane, thank you so much for joining us and giving, these, giving us these wonderful shopping tips. We appreciate it. My pleasure. All right. Family Health Today will return in just a moment.